All right, everybody. So for those of you that have been watching and listening to Rock Titan for a while, you probably noticed that we've had some pretty big artists like uh, Rick Allen from Def Leppard and Paul Stanley from Kiss and Mickey Hart from The Grateful Dead. And, you know, these guys are some you know big time musicians. But when they're not making music, they channel their energies in other ways, you know, and in their case, they're painters. One of the things that's really cool right now is we have almost the exact opposite, okay? Because with us right now, we have a Grammy Award-winning music producer and an Oscar-winning actor. And when they're not doing that stuff, these guys are rock stars. They decide to rock out on the side. Guys, I am joined by the Box Masters, Billy Bob, Bud Thornton, and J.D. Andrew. Guys, how are you? Good. How's good, everybody? Man. Good, yeah. good. Well, I appreciate you taking the time out on the tour trail. You know, I know you guys are actually putting on a show. So, uh, but Spec, we're in support of Spec. How's everything been? Well, it's been great. Uh, the record was produced by Jeff Emmerich, who was the Beatles engineer, starting yeah. with Volver all the way through the end of their career. And we'd known Jeff for a number of years. Okay. He was always a big Boxmasters fan, which was honor enough for us already. But, uh, oh, no. He always wanted to produce a record on us, and it finally worked out. And uh, and uh, Jeff passed away a few months after we finished the record, so we're out here on this tour, kind of honoring him. And uh, okay, uh, it was uh, it was uh, a really amazing experience to be able to sit in the studio and have a record produced by the guy who produced our heroes. You know, it's pretty pretty incredible. That is pretty epic. And I was just going to ask you guys, actually, you, you jumped ahead of me there, bud. Uh, but uh, as far as, uh, you know, how bittersweet it must be, because you get a legendary music producer like Emmerich and, you know, he unfortunately passed away before Spec actually came out. So what were some of those emotions like? And I guess is, is that really what this tour is all about? The fact that you're out here yeah. touring in support of it now in his memory, really? Is it, would you consider this a tribute to him? Absolutely. You know, we, uh, you know, first off, we were huge fans of Jeff right. and, you know, we loved just spending time with him and uh, to have the opportunity to work with him, you know, was really a privilege. And, you know, we, our intention was to have him kind of do some of these press things with us and hopefully he would come, you know, come to a few shows or something and be able to talk about uh, the record and working together. And, uh, you know, sadly, we, we don't have that chance. Right, right. Uh, we, we teamed up with a label out of uh, Nashville called 30 Tigers to put this record out. And we wanted to put it out for the tour last summer, but it, there wasn't enough time from the time we finished the record to the time the tour was coming. They wanted a little more time to market it. So we had to wait until this tour to uh, get it out there. Right. right. Now, now, happens, now, but, uh, yeah. You know. well, I, I got to ask you, JD, because obviously you, you, you're a music producer and engineer yourself. And I know that you've done the Box Masters, you know, other works. Now, you know, Emmer comes in here. What was that like for you to be, you know, collaborating with someone as legendary as himself? And I guess kind of taking a little bit of a, a side seat, you know, for this particular album. I mean, was that the case? Yeah, well, he, yeah, usually I mix our records, but right. it was so great to have somebody else, especially if you're going to let somebody else mix one of your songs <laughs> or your records, right. you know, you can't do much worse than, or better, which way? <laughs> no. Can't do any better. Can't do much worse. Well, yeah, no, you can't do any better. Much worse. Can't do much worse. What the heck is that? No, no. But yeah, yeah. the but the sound, the sound of this particular album, Spec, of course, is what we're talking about. The ninth studio album from the Box Masters. This came out in June, everybody. So go check it out on Amazon. Go get Spec. And I love the album cover too. And I heard a little bit of the uh, story behind that, which I thought was really cool. But uh, it was funny because I, I listened to the album and I kept waiting to hear a song kind of like maybe what you had off of some of your earlier works because, you know, one of the songs I'm thinking of, you know, I'll give you a ring. That actually should have been, that song should have been my proposal to my wife. You know, <laughs> like when I got down on one knee, I'll give you a ring. Just give them back to me. Give them back, you know, but... Uh, <laughs> But, but this had a very different sound. I mean, it really did have, you know, that real classic rock, you know, British Invasion, Beatles-esque sound. I mean, I, but I wouldn't have even known, you know, I mean, that that was your vocals. You know, if I didn't know it was you, I would have never suspected it just based upon your voice. 
Well, what he did was, uh, and you know, you probably are referring to some of our first couple albums where yeah, we did yeah. hillbilly stuff. But right, right. since those records, the other six or seven that we put out are closer to this sound of spec, you know, and that's, um, you know, so we started sounding like we'd really sound, you know, those first records are kind of experimental, you know, kind of tongue in cheek hillbilly records we did, but that's not even what we sound like, you know, right, so right, right. this record right. sounds like us, but what it is, uh, the things that Jeff did was um, <clears throat> he would take um, a lot of instrumentation out or or put it pretty far back in the mix that we would normally have out front because we play that sort of jangly bird style, Tom Petty style kind of stuff, you know. Right. And uh, Jeff was not real big on rhythm guitars and cymbals and stuff like that or organ if it was just a pad in the middle of the song. And... Uh, his whole thing was he wants to present the song to people. The song is the most important thing. So if there's anything gets in the way, he dumps it. And, you know, we always want to do that. But then at the same time, we'll put a few things on there that we just like the way they sound and we leave them. Well, Jeff, it can be, you know, he would be brutal about it. He'd go, you know what? I love the way that guitar sounds too, but I don't care. It's in the way of the vocal. We're getting rid of it. Right and so we learned, right we learned a lot of how to make a song and the meaning of the song and the vocal come to the forefront just by clearing out a lot of space. And it's not that we didn't know that's what you do if you want that to happen. It's just that, you know, we're one of those bands who are just loud. And, and Jeff, uh, Jeff took a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff uh, out of these mixes and it, and it really worked well. Both ways of mixing a record we think are valid and very, you know, uh, worthy you know uh they're just different ways of doing things but it's nice for us to have a record where that actually came about and then he would put treatment on a vocal and you'd listen to it and you go wow that's the same thing that john lennon's voice or he'd put something on a piano and it's like wow that's like when mccarty played piano right and uh, so but he wouldn't tell it you know jd begged him to tell him his secrets <laughs> you know sure. but but jeff was very very tight-lipped about that stuff hey. at least with a so he, I went to his memorial, and there was person after person who talked about how much they learned from him, how many tricks he taught him, and uh, I was like standing in the corner going, he wouldn't tell me that. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I was yeah. all, other guys talking because, uh, you know, I was always just such a big fan, and uh, you can hear the other band sound checking. Yeah, sound opening. check, yeah, yeah. That's I uh, got a lot of low end, but... Uh, um. Yeah, you know, we uh, we all learned a lot from Jeff. If even if it wasn't about our songs, just the stories he would talk about. You know, his whole growing up was with McCartney and and the and the Beatles and Ringo and you know. So he was always just t his stories were well. Paul came in one day and had a you know cheese sandwich or whatever, and then we uh, did this and and you sit there and it's like it's so it was so normal for him to be with those guys creating those classic records that right. you know he just kind of talked about him in an offhanded way that blew our minds most of the time and he was younger than them i mean you know uh when he started he was just a teenager you know and so so when he was in there with them when they were 20 he was like 16 or something you know so yeah. uh he he was um uh, and probably in those days you know well he, he's even said stuff about it he goes we didn't know much about you know that when we're kids working around Abbey Road, there. You know, we just thought it's like some other band in there, and it's like oh, I got to go work on this today because they will sign you stuff. So he worked around them on their early records, but only as like a kid that ran and got coffee or ran a machine or something like that. He didn't start engineering to Revolver, but he was still he was only he was uh, there so for every song. He was there every for all every recording from the beginning. Wow. The test the test record he was there. And, uh, yeah, so it, he saw every bit, except for the few weeks or whatever that he took off for that White Album. You know, he was there for the entire Beatles career, pretty much. So That's wild. And then McCartney, everybody, you know, after that. So his experience and the things he invented, the sounds that we hear these days, you know, he was had a big hand in inventing a lot of them. So That's amazing. It's, it's always just amazing, you know that we had that guy help us with one of our records. 
At, that that truly is. That is awesome. And I mean, you know, talk about growing up with someone like that, you know, and, and listening to the work that they've done, you know, just coming up as kids. I thought it was very interesting. And I want to ask this of both of you, um, you know, Billy, with you, you know, you didn't even want to be an actor from what I understand. Like your first love truly was music. Yeah. And then the acting thing just kind of happened by accident. Yeah, I started out in bands when I was in junior high school. And that's all I ever did, you know, really. So um, and played, then play baseball a bit. And played baseball. So played a band. And and, uh, and uh, I became a roadie later on in my late teens and early twenties, and traveled with a lot of bands. And and I went to California just to you know get in a band, and uh, ended up the other thing happened kind of by mistake. But even though I've been playing music longer, I, I grew to really love the acting world, and so I I love both of them. You know, there's there's nothing wrong with it. It can be so, lucrative. It can be lucrative. You know, well, sometimes, you know, it depends on, depends on what it is. You know, I've turned down a lot of things that were lucrative because they were not very good. <laughs> right. Now, is so, there any, is there anything you ever turned down that you wish you hadn't that wound up being something bigger than what you thought? I can't think of it. No. no. I, right. think I've, uh, so, I think I've done the things, you know, some have been better than others. Some I like more than others, but I've done the ones I've wanted to. I've never... I don't think I have any regrets. Right on, right on. Now, JD, for you, you know, with you know your background being in music engineering and production and whatnot, did you ever foresee yourself in a band? You know, now nine albums deep. I mean, you guys have been together for you know over ten years now doing this stuff. Did you ever see this being yeah. a reality for yourself? No, I, honestly, I, I didn't. And uh, you know, I was always just focused on being a recording engineer and, and you know, the, as, as we were starting the band, you know, thankfully Billy saw, you know, uh, somebody that he could teach how to play guitar because <laughs> I learned how to play guitar in this band and everything <laughs> I do musically is, has turned in the context of this band. Well, he's pretty and, humble. He already played pretty well. He just, well, but as you know, over the years, everybody gets better, and the more we do it, been doing it our whole lives, and just the more you do it, the better you get. The more records we make, the better the records get. Sure, uh, sure. So I didn't, I didn't anticipate ever being in a band. I just, I would play every once in a while, sitting around in the, you know, the studio or whatever. But you know, at the same time, the music industry was changing so much as we were starting the band, and so. Uh, as we've gone along, it's there's not. It's hard to even exist as or just a recording engineer anymore. You have to be able to do so many other things. Sure. And uh, you know, we work with all these kids in the recording studios that we work at. Because mostly we work at the old A and M recording studios, which is now called Henson. Okay. And uh, you know, we see the kids there, and we just wonder about. How where their where their path is going to lead them because it isn't how it used to be. You don't just apprentice for a while and then make your way to uh, working with other people. I feel like we're frozen. No. Nah. Um, oh, there. No, yeah, you yeah. were. You were. It was just. You okay. Were holding you know, a, a so I got to tell you something. You were so good at being frozen just now that you could be one of those people at a party who acts like a statue. You know. <laughs> Paint me gold. Paint me gold. You know. I'll be one of those things. I could be like Oscar. You know. Good, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not bad, not bad. I know, but uh, I so uh, I didn't know the top opening for us again. Yeah, I know. This it's time, done two or three GP top songs. I mean, right, yeah, those guys are doing <laughs> one heck of a uh, drum bass sound check. I tell you right now, those guys are they're killing it right now. They are killing it. But uh, one one thing I want to ask you guys about, you know, since we are, you know, Rock Tight and Music Television and Rock Tight and Live, music videos. And I loved your early music videos, you know, with some of the earlier stuff that you did, like the Hillbilly, not quite Rockabilly, but uh, we did have a chance to catch up with Reverend Horton Heat, which he was awesome. He was absolutely awesome. Are you guys familiar with Reverend Horton Heat at all? We don't know him. We love him, but we don't know. Yeah, we don't. Right, right, right. Yeah, right on, right on. Okay, but uh, do you guys have any music videos that you're going to be doing for Spec, or have you already done any? I haven't seen any. No, we haven't done one yet, but we have a plan to do one. All right. And uh, yeah, we've already got kind of the style it's going to be in and everything. We have a good friend back home who actually in California who actually did the album cover for us, and he's a real genius. This guy. And uh, he uh, is going to do uh, a video on us at some point here pretty soon. And uh, 
Very cool. He's very, very good. Yeah. Very cool. And we also shot some stuff at a, at Sellersville the other night. We had some guys who uh, offered uh, to shoot the show. And so oh, wow. we're going to cut some together from uh, from that. And so we'll, uh, we'll have a couple live things that we had from that the other night here pretty soon, hopefully. Nice. If I can get around to mixing the audio. And... Uh, yeah, we're we're trying to get some more things where there's more video content because you know people like to see right. see us and see the songs in different ways as well. So we want to work on some more of that because you know we're old school guys. So to us, you make a record, you go out and tour, and that's just not what it all is anymore. You're you have to do so many more kind of things that are involving the fans and and just. They want to see the songs in different ways and do different, different things, different kind of content, so they can stay up with you all the time. We but, never, we never heard the word content outside of a book where it says table of contents in our <laughs> lives until all this came about. But, but you know, when we were coming up, it was the opposite. It's like bands wanted to remain a mystery, and now it's it's completely the opposite, where it's all about content and all about putting stuff out there on yourselves. And so people, I, I, you know, I guess both things are cool. I mean, remaining mysterious is one thing, but then again, also connecting with fans is a great thing and actually, you know, becoming almost like pals with your fans on, on the internet, you know? Right. Right. Now, now, uh, you know, all that being said, um, you talk about, you know, different kinds of content, putting yourself out there. How about any of your uh, music being featured in the soundtrack of a television show or a movie or something like that? Have you guys put any thought or effort into making that happen? We've, we've done it, actually. Okay. Uh, we've scored a couple of things. We scored a documentary and one film, and uh, we just, uh, two, actually, there's just an independent film that... Uh, that's going on the festival circuit right now that that's we did sweet. part of the score for. And, uh, I also, uh, sang the, uh, uh, title song for the, for the movie and, uh, or the theme song for the movie. And, uh, we did a box masters version of that same song, which was an nice song, but we used it for the end credit sequence. And, um, uh, then we had a movie. Uh, that movie's song. called spare room. Yeah, I was just going to ask called. you, okay. Spare room. Now is, is that out right now? It's, uh, I think it's still going around the festivals. Yeah, I don't I know think. if it's got distribution yet. But, I don't think it's, it's, you know, it's a very small movie, so yeah. okay. you know it might just end up somewhere where you can watch it, but we don't know where it is yet. So We also had a song in uh, a Sam Rockwell movie for Lionsgate several years back. Oh, and, right. uh, but, yeah. yeah, we've had our, we've had a few things happen mm -hmm. like that, and um, but at the same time, you always have to have somebody working on that stuff. It's not really something that we can do on our own exactly. It's it's music supervisors and uh, other, I, I don't know, who else, who else ever puts the stuff, you know, pe yeah. there's got to be people that are out there pitching your music, and we just haven't had that. Um, we've uh, kind of always kind of kept our stuff kind of close to us, and uh, we just haven't had anybody out working for us because honestly, that costs money. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing about it is all the people you have to hire to get your stuff out there to people they cost too damn much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, we're doing that for you right now on Rock Titan. So uh, hopefully, hopefully, uh, you know. Hopefully this catches fire because, yeah. you know, I really did love spec. Now, you guys are going to be touring well in August here. Of course, now we're in July, you know, so we're going to be running up against your birthday here, I guess, Billy, in the not too distant future. And uh, yeah. so what's happening, you know, after the tour ends? Where do you guys go from there? I guess uh, you got Goliath to think about there, bud. And uh, J.D., what are you, you going to be doing? I got three kids or three, five, and seven. And, oh, wow. Uh, Yours are younger than school, mine. Okay. When we get home, school starts a few days later. So that'll be – I've got one of them starting kindergarten. So it's going to be a whole new routine for the whole family. Okay. And uh, so there's that. You know, any second that we can, we get in the studio and we record more songs. We've kind of started a couple things on the bus. So, you know, as the tour goes along, we'll kind of get some more things written. And then when we're home, we'll get in and record them. And then we'll start thinking about 
what the next record is because we finished one right before we went on tour. We okay. we completely uh, finished mixing it, and so that means we have got one down. Wow! And uh, it's time to start thinking about what the next project is going to be because uh, you know there's got to be a vision and a I you know an overarching kind of uh, idea of what this next thing is going to be because it's there's always got to be something that ties a record together either thematically or sonically and all that so. We've got to start thinking about what kind of road we want to go down for the next thing. And plus, like JD said, we both have three kids, and so there's never a lack of something to do. Yeah. I got yeah. three kids too. My twins are going to be seniors in high school next year. You know, so and then I got an 11 year old. So it's nuts. I know what you're talking about. You know, balancing the professional life and the personal life. It it can be very challenging. You know. Well, of course, yeah, you know. especially when you leave. A couple months a year and uh yeah you know leave uh, leave the wives with the kids and they hate us for a while <laughs> after we get home so they typically uh at least mine that takes off for a little while and kind of says here you're dealing with the kids for a while i'm <laughs> gonna uh just uh i'm gonna i'm gonna free my mind a little bit <laughs> yeah there you go there you go well guys i know you got a show to put on but uh, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us on Rock Titan. It's been absolutely awesome catching up with you. And good luck with Spec, you know, and congratulations on it. And uh, have a very safe rest of your tour. Thanks, Scott. We're looking forward to seeing what's on the green screen when uh, we see the show. Yeah, it's <laughs> your album cover. It's going to be your awesome album cover, you know, that, uh, you know, because we're all just a little speck. I love that, you know, how you got like the different fingerprints and everyone touching that card of the cover. And, you know, it's just a little piece of everybody. So I love that. I love that whole philosophy and mentality that went into that. Uh, kudos. Kudos to your artist on that. That was very, very cool. Wow. Thank you, Scott. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, right on. Appreciate it.